Welcome to Canvas Projects, a virtual program offering from the Pflugerville Public Library. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian, here with another fun project geared to ages 12 and up for you to complete. Those who registered through the library calendar can pick up their material supply kits, and for everyone else watching, we hope you give these techniques a try. This month's project is a sea turtle canvas. Let's start with a look at the supplies being provided. So in our envelopes, this month we have an 8x10 canvas panel. Um, since we'll be gluing things to it, I wanted something a little sturdier. So also we have the small, uh, less than an ounce little Eileen's Tacky Glue in there. Um, depending on how much patience you have, uh, you may decide you could do this project with hot glue or um, you could even probably use a um, less significant white glue if you left it a little bit longer to allow the things to um, attach to the canvas panel. Um, so we have a brush. I believe everybody got the flat brush um, so that we can add our watercolor. And for that, we have the watercolor card. And the two colors I chose for this project were pretty straightforward. Um, for the green, I picked the one called Seaweed. Um, and for the blue, we have the Aegean Blue. Um, since this is basically kind of a painting of an underwater scene, I thought those were the perfect colors for that. Um, this is another one of those projects where I had a bunch of supplies lying around and I really wanted to use up some things um, to make some space for new things. Uh, so we had a while back purchased uh, seashells, I believe through Dollar Tree, um, and so I had some extra. So everybody got uh, two of the shells that have a little bit more color and interest to them. Um, and then one of the mainly white shells. Uh, additionally, in the little bag, you should have 15 pieces of sea glass. Um, and these are 10 of the slightly darker and then five of the slightly lighter green. Um, and that's what you're, we're gonna use to add our fins and head to our turtle. So here's my example. Um, we've got our shells. We've got the sea glass, and yes, I know our turtles are not exactly um, real true to life, uh, but that's half the fun of these projects. I have a nephew who is really enamored with sea turtles, and um, so this was one I thought of him with as I was planning the project. So for starting, you actually are going to set your sea glass aside. A little bit of uh, fun info on the sea glass. Uh, so what we purchased wasn't exactly to size. So I had these lighter green and they came in all different shapes and sizes. Um, and then I went and got uh, the darker green again. So some of these pieces aren't really shaped right or sized right. Um, if you are familiar with our library, our library, you know we do a fair amount of glass fusing uh, crafts. So we have some glass cutting tools around. Um, so I really did just trim down a lot of these glass pieces um, so that we, they would be a better size for this project. Um, and then for all of you, because in my initial test run here, my example, I did not sand down the sides. Um, and so it was a little dangerous and a little um, sharp. The pieces you've received in your kit have been sanded. Um, we had this fun little Dremel here. I had my safety gloves, my safety glasses. I even wore a mask as I spent the time um, kind of dremeling down the sides of those pieces. Um, so they should, while I don't, I would not recommend really um, trying to get yourself cut by one of these pieces, um, but they should be fairly okay to not cut anyone. But please do be careful with the sea glass. Things beyond the kit that you'll want for this project because we are using watercolor and um, we're going to want a little bit of water for that. I did grab some paper towels just so I can clean off my brushes. And if you've done any of our projects before or have other paint brushes, you may decide to pull out a detail brush just so you can kind of add some extra things when we get to the painting stage. Um, additionally, some scissors will be handy as the glue bottles. Um, are brand new, so they are not open. 
Um, if you don't have scissors or a knife to cut off that tip, uh, you would be able to open the lid of the bottle and I would suggest maybe using the handle of the paintbrush and that would get you the glue out and you'd be able to glue down your seashells. Um, but with the glue open, we've got the, the tip cut off, we can use this. So that really is our first step, taking our canvas panel um, we are going to decide where we want our turtles to be, how we want them to kind of be swimming along. We're doing just three, maybe one guy kind of going straight forward and these two going a little off to the side. I like that placement. Now this might be a fun project. Um, so I'm going to take my glue, sorry for the slight aside there, get my glue to the front of my bottle. And I'm just going to lay a moderate bead of glue around the inside of my shell. And I'm going to place him down where I want him. Push into the canvas. And I'm going to repeat that process for my other shells. This might be a cool project to do something along the lines of if you have shells that you have collected from places um, as a way to kind of display them. I mean, you might just have them in a bowl or something around the house. And now for this seashell, I can see that this area along the corner is not really getting much connection. So I'm going to hold the shell there and I'm just going to bring my glue bottle right there and kind of feed a little bit more glue in so that I know it's got connection. Uh, these glues do dry clear. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem once the glue dries um, in order for it to be, you know, we'll paint and you won't really notice that. Final shell for this one. And this is going to be another one of those projects where it's a good thing that we've got you doing this on your own time. Um, because at this point, now that my glue is on there, I do want to let it set. So um, we are gonna wanna give that at least an hour or two, if not the day before you really feel like painting, um, glue them on, set it aside for maybe 24 hours. Through the magic of, we have another one here and I actually had a sm another smaller shell um, that I went ahead and put on this one. So here's my, my little turtles, my shells are on there. Turn it upside down, shake it, these are glued on about one or two places. I can, you see that little bit of a shine there. I don't know if you can see the shell, a little bit of a shine there. Um, so this point, I have a couple of options. Um, I could have glued my pieces on right from the get-go and done my, my painting through. So that's what I did on my example. So my little legs were glued on before I did my watercolor. So I can see here where I've got some white where I wasn't really able to get the watercolor paint all the way up to. And while I do love how this one turned out, um, I don't think that that little bit of white space detracts from it. Um, it also kept, so here on the white shell, some of that watercolor paint kind of came up into it. Um, so for this particular project, I thought that um, I would like to try, instead of painting last, painting in the middle. So I've got my shells glued down, and now I want to add my um, paint to it. Let's get started with a little bit of water. All right. Get some of my watercolor paint reconstituted there. And then I'm just gonna start coming in and adding my ocean color. This is pretty dark, so I can come with more water, bring it around. And since this is supposed to be underwater, I want just that blue just about everywhere. And one of the great things with watercolors as I lay that color down, if I feel it's a little too dark, I can come back later and add more water to really bring it down. 
I also like this technique for the fact that I, I don't have to be so precise. I really can just let that paint go. Pull around more water. Come up around this guy. I can also try where I lay down some water first. Now my brush had a little bit of paint to it. Coming point for more. Oh, I love that. And I'm doing really broad strokes with this paint for this first pass because I really am just trying to lay down that full coverage of the under when give the sense of being underwater. All right. Very close. And now, because it's just the shells, I can get really close to them. And so when I'm ready uh, to finally glue on the turtle parts, I will be able to have that. Let's see, a little early in the process. Like if this is my little turtle arm, now I see that blue through. Let's see how it looks. So there's my original. So there's I mean, a little bit of difference. I see that darker blue through it where it's really the lightness. So that is a choice that you'll make as you're working on your project, whether you want to glue down all of your pieces first. So glue down your shells and then glue down your glass pieces and then take this step of painting. Or if you're going to do as I'm doing now where I'm, I glued the shells down, gave them time to dry and now I'm painting before I attach the sea glass. I just love the way that watercolor looks. And this is such a beautiful blue and for our turtles. Now the green I did include because you know, we've got our oceans are not a, a true, true blue. So I really just kind of came through with that green, continued to brush. And on this one, so I, I definitely want to lay down just that hint of green in the water. But then I also decided, and that's part of the reason I pulled out this um, smaller detailed brush, is that I really want to come back in here with that dark green and kind of paint some sea some seaweed to our color into what my turtles are swimming through. And so I feel like just that real cool and that'll definitely be kind of another stage. So with these projects, you've got all the time in the world. Do a step, let it sit, come back, pull some more. You've got the time, come back again. Your, your watercolor card will dry and you'll be able to reconstitute that paint fairly easily. This piece, this step would be my very last step. I would definitely wait until I had everything kind of on there. I just for the video purposes wanted to show you because I see that we are getting very close to a 15 minute mark. And so I want to let us get out there and start painting. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and our next. And as always, we look forward to seeing um, how your projects turn out. And thank you so much for watching.